Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I would like to go over rebuilding the Carl Stort 300 watt xenon bulb. Here you can see the bulb holder. Uh, some hospitals tend to just ship these out to Carl Stort and buy whole replacement ones and that's very expensive. Uh, that can be well over a thousand dollars if I remember right versus just going out and buying the bulb which you can see here at I believe it's $220, $250. This is an Exelita's PE 300 BFA bulb and it comes with a little bit of thermal conductivity paste. So we rebuild them and most hospitals I believe do but uh, I often see people doing them wrong or making a complete mess and uh, that's why I'm making this video because I'd like to try and get the record straight on how to rebuild these bulbs. So uh, you can see some of the support documentation for the bulb. We're just going to throw that aside because it doesn't matter. What you will need is a Phillips number two screwdriver and a 760 forts Allen. There's four Phillips screws that hold the interface card to the heat sink and then there are two Phillips screws that are the clamping force that retain the bulb. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take off the card. Oh, by the way, you can see that I'm wearing gloves. Please wear gloves. Not just because this is a mess and this is the easiest way to clean it up, but when you're handling bulbs, uh, oils from the skin will destroy the face of a bulb. It'll create a hot spot. So always use nitrile gloves when you're handling bulbs. I'm going to finish taking off the card. You know I'm not using power tools. The Vibrations caused by power tools can also destroy the bulb. These are arc clamps and what that means is that there is no filament. It's an electronic arc across a pressurized gas. And you can see the anode and cathode right there. There is no visible spot on a new bulb, barely any, and that's just from testing. But on an expired bulb, as you'll see on this guy, there will be a sunspot or a burn spot and sometimes even browning on the reflector. And the browning is uh, where the arc is starting to arc over inside the lamp. And that's very bad. It, it'll basically cause the bulb to eventually self-destruct. So on a bulb, if you're looking to see if it's new or not, just take a look down at the, where the anode and cathode gap is and you will see a, a large black spot and that means that it's a, a spent bulb it's used at least so here's my brand new bulb finish removing the card now I want you to take notice that the card interface right here and right here goes over the fat portion of the heat sink because I have seen people install this guy backwards and it's just don't do it. So it goes over the fat portion of the heat sinks. I'm going to take the card and put it off to the side. Here you can see my two heat sinks. I've got three little screws down here. That's the 764. I'm going to go ahead and remove those now. And I'm going to dump those into a little tray because as you see, there's more than just the screws in there. There's a tiny little lock ring. So you want to make sure that you retain those rings. That's why I dump them onto a dish. The next thing is to loosen up the clamping screws. Here and here. 
and now you can just give the heat sinks a twist and it'll separate. I'm going to use my extra glove to grab onto this bulb. So here's the bulb. Beware of the white paste. It gets on everything. So that's why I'm using this glove as a disposable. And I'm just going to go and throw that bulb straight in the trash. Now the next thing you need to do is with your new bulb, there's going to be some packing foam. I want you to take that foam and rip it in two. All right. So once you have the foam ripped in pieces, you can take that foam and use it to clean out the heat sink. Okay, take it, stick it down in there, give it a spin, and it will clean out all that extra paste. You can tell whoever rebuilt this bulb used an abundant amount of that paste it everywhere. But because the foam can conform to the lands and grooves down inside this heat sink, it's excellent source for cleaning those out. That nice clean cavity for the new bulb. Make sure you th throw that foam away. Um, don't leave it on your desktop. When this white garbage gets on something, it makes an absolute mess. So try and maintain as little bit of a mess and a clean work environment because you don't want to get this stuff on the face of that bulb. These bulbs are about $220, so try and be nice to it. All right. So if you happen to get some of the the white goo on some of your tools or even on your gloves. You don't have to change out your gloves. Just take the foam and rub it on your glove. And it's like a magnet for this white goo. See that? Cleans it right up. Keeps it on the foam. So this housing here looks like it's pretty clean. clean enough for what I'm doing anyway. Next you want to take a brush if there's any sort of lint on these fins. I believe there is on mine. So I keep a brush like this one. And just brush them off. Clean those fins out. It's a lot of debris that gathers up on heat sinks. There we go, nice and clean. Okay, so the cavity is nice and clean aluminum. The outsides are clean. I'm going to set this one off to the side and do the next one. You can see how well that foam just cleans up all that thermal compound. It does a really nice job. Nice, smooth, even swipes. You'll clean it right out. There you go. Okay, there we go. You can see that this one's clean as well. Oop, got a little bit more down on this side. Got to check it very thoroughly. Okay. All right, that's clean. All right, next we're gonna take the bulb, and there's a little nodule, that's where they actually pressurize it with the air. And that is gonna correlate with the gap that's in the back of the heat sink. So you're gonna align it so that nodule is in the bottom. Guesstimate where its alignment's gonna be. I'm gonna lay it right here. Okay. I just opened up the corner on this thermal compound so a little bit's coming out. All right. I'm going to put a couple dabs of this thermal compound around the bottom and on the sides. 
And here's the secret. Is you take your gloved hand and just spin the bulb. And it creates a nice, uniform, even layer of thermal compound. You're not making a mess. See that? Because all you're trying to do with the thermal compound is create an interface between two materials. So there we go. Nice uniform coating. Make sure that the nodule is aligned properly. Put it in its heat sink. Now you can tell I got a dirty glove, so I'm going to pop that one off. Because you don't want to touch the bulb after you dirtied up one of your gloves. And I'm going to install a new glove. I'm going to flip the heat sink over, rotate the bulb just enough, and you can see how on one side we have two screws and the other side we have one. I'm going to first put in the two screws on the one side. There we go. Sure you don't cross thread them. Make sure they go in nice and nice and firm. Okay. And on the third side, I'm just going to get the thread started. I'm not going to tighten it down. I'm just going to get them started. And the reason you don't want to tighten it down is because you're going to clamp these two together. Oh, look at that. Got a dirty heat sink there. And clean this one off. Okay, clean, clean, good. All right, so on this side here, I'm gonna tighten down the clamping screw on the first side. There we go. Now I go back and tighten down the third 7 16 screw. There we go. Okay, now that the bulb is in, it's aligned, we're going to take off the cover that's protecting the face of the bulb and we're going to take a little tiny bit of this thermal compound just put a couple dabs around the outside you don't have to use the whole packet matter of fact I only use about a quarter of the packet some people just go nuts with this stuff and it doesn't make any sense so very carefully what you're going to do is just grip the bulb like you did before and just give it a spin back and forth creating a uniform coating of, of thermal compound. And you can see I've got a dirty glove, so I'm going to take that glove off. And now I'm going to align the two heat sinks. So you can see what I'm doing here is I put both heat sinks down on a flat surface and press them together. That way there I know that they're planar, which means that the card it nice and flat. If it's not planar, you'll have one heat sink doing this and one heat sink doing that. So make sure that it's nice and square. And then go ahead and tighten down the other clamping screw. Alright. Now place it on a flat surface and check it. Make sure that they're sitting flat, and they are. Excellent. Now it's time to install the card. Now here is where a lot of people run into problems. If you don't have these two heat sinks seated close enough together, your card will not made up. And you can tell I'm almost off right there. So I'm going to loosen up the front heat sink. Just leave it kind of loose. I'm going to put in my back two screws. Just kind of barely snug them down. That way I know my back heat sink isn't going to move. Okay. My front heat sink, it can still move around. 
and I'm just going to make sure that I press them in again, nice and tight. I can put my screws in. Check all the other screws for tension. Make sure that they're all tight. Everything's seated correctly. My heat sink is clean and there's no debris on the lens. All right, and that is a successfully rebuilt Carl Stortz bulb. Got a little bit of uh, compound there on the uh, heat sink, so I cleaned that off. There we go, it's ready to install. Now, if you're going to put these in storage and you're just going to leave them rebuilt on a shelf, I highly suggest putting a large piece of uh, packing tape and leave a flag off the side. Because I've before, when it was just me rebuilding these, I'd put tape over the, the entrance and I've had a technician install that bulb into a unit and it caused a little burn hole in the plastic, created a little bit of a situation. Um, because he forgot to take the tape off. So now I put tape across the whole heat sink and I leave a nice three or four inch flag off the side and that will go on the shelf as a bulb rebuilt ready to install. So when they go to install it, they see the flag, they pull the tape off and pop the bulb in, you're good to go. But that's how you rebuild the Carl Stortz Xenon bulb, 300 watt, the part number is right there, Exolitas. PE300BFA. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video.